The decision to continue my Jeep Cherokee adventures kind of fell into my lap, and since I gained confidence traveling throughout the USA West with my old Jeep XJ, I figured why not do it again, this time converting a British Jeep in the UK. Now I wonder, was I a bit too overconfident in this plan? I mean, traveling the UK in the coldest time of year doesn't really sound like the best plan. Awful ideas. <laughs> I already traveled through the deadly desert heat. Why not try overlanding in the bitter cold? In any case, we have a lot of challenges on our way. There could be some things wrong. Including getting this old 1997 Jeep Cherokee off-road ready on an extreme budget. But I'm still wondering, am I in over my head? Golding Barn Garage in Henfield, Sussex, and we're getting a full service on Tanku. We're getting everything checked out. We're going to put it up on the lift and see the underside and see what all is wrong with it because we don't know. There could be some things wrong, a lot of things, but we're hoping not too many. I hope you done your hair this morning, Kev. <laughs> really nervous the mechanics because it feels like you're at the doctors because it could be a very expensive fix. There's the underside. The only other thing was the ABS. Um, I think it was a code 09 but that was actually um, pointing to the pump, the actual ABS pump. So before we replace it we'd have to do all the tests. Firstly, we're taking the tire off from the back and we're having it welded by Ker Curzon? Curzon. Okay, all right. All right. All right, thank you. So we're going to get that fixed so we can finally put the tire on the back, which is going to look so much better. And uh, let me give you kind of a recap of what they told us about the Jeep. We're in front of a random abandoned building right here. But, so the, diag the diagnosis of the, the full service and what they checked out so, if I can remember correctly, the wheel bearings, they need replaced, we knew that, the control arms, obviously. He said it is in pretty good condition. So one of the problems with the light on the dash is the ABS light and the ABS pump is potentially out. So that is something that we're going to have to fix. We're going to have to send that in because it's too expensive to get a brand new part. That can be fixed. We can still drive it with that on. So the bushings on the leaf springs in the back will need to be replaced as well. But in all, we can still drive it and it's like not as, you know, like when you take it to the mechanic, you're always worried that it's the worst case scenario, but it's like actually in pretty good condition for its age. Obviously there's just like gonna be lots of wear and tear on these types of 90s vehicles. Um, not too bad. We have the control arm, arm still coming and then just replace the bearings. And then we can start taking it on ventures, but also start converting and start getting into the fun stuff. are a struggle but that's usual here i'm very cold it's very windy um so sorry that i'm shivering right now i don't want this is not a negative video this is just the struggle of everything and i, I do show you guys the realisticness of the things that i do which sometimes are terrible bad awful ideas but we're doing them anyways we're preparing for even more terrible ideas like going to the coldest places in the UK during the coldest time of the year. We're getting to know this Jeep and we've found a lot of things about it that, you know, it's a 1997 Jeep Cherokee. It's gonna, it's gonna have its issues. So we're trying to fix everything. So it's safe to overland and drive with. Not everything's broken, but as you can see, it's still an amazing Jeep. The there's no rust. Like that's the main thing that we were concerned about. There are things that need to be fixed. The wheel bearings still need replaced. So we have the wheel bearings coming. These are the wrong kind because the company sent us the wrong kinds. The ignition wires and we got a full service. Also, there's an issue with the 
I don't know if it's electronical. Electronical. My mouth is really cold. <laughs> but the all the gauges at the front keep going in and out. And I'm not complaining about this Jeep. I still love it. Tanku's great. But I'm try we're trying to address all these issues before we go and die in Wales and Scotland. But so I just wanted to show you the process and the updates. So we're getting the control arms replaced now finally. These from the USA. So this right here is the messed up control arm. And so we're replacing both of them, but the messed up one is on this side. So far it feels a lot tighter, um, which is nice because so the rattling probably was mainly from the control arms, but also the wheel bearing we still need to fix. budget build. I'm using stuff from the wish list and trying to save as much money as possible. So let me show you what some things are from the wish list and organize this back a little bit because it's not looking good. If you guys want to access the wish list, it's in the description. I'm not asking for you to, it's just if anybody wanted to. But this is what I got. I got a nice organizer here. I think it's really, really important to have organization whenever you're overlanding or whatever because things get thrown around. As you can see, we have a lot of loose parts here, so we're gonna try and clean those up. The thing with this is we're gonna have to sleep in the back here, so having this to be able to take this stuff and put it in the front would be nice because this is gonna be a tight sleep. I, we're not gonna get any sleep at all. This is not a big space. Like you guys know, I, I barely fit in my other Jeep. This has this thing that we still need to take out. Um, so that's really gonna even take off more sleeping area. So probably gonna be very grumpy on these trips. Ugh. Ugh. Right. I'm just put some tools in here. It's another thing off my wish list which I had these in Yuki as well, and we'll probably need these, especially if we're going to the top of Scotland. This is my wishes too, a sleeping bag, which is great because I didn't have anything to sleep with. <laughs> I also don't have a knife. That's okay, I have a hammer. <laughs> okay. I don't really like sleeping bags that aren't like comfy on the inside, that they're all like shh, like art. Um, this is 100% cotton on the inside. So, this is basically the setup we have so far, which is, you know, this is what it is. You know, can't really sprawl out or anything, but that's what we have so far. I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about kind of my mental state and 
how I've been feeling through this whole process. Uh, it's been a little frustrating, but this is how things go. I've been very frustrated lately, and let, let's, let's go talk about it. <sighs> okay, I haven't been really updating you guys on my personal self and life because I want my content to be more geared towards the adventures and stuff I have and keeping my personal life and things more not part of it because I feel like it's nice to have something like of my own state. I feel like I should update guys a little just so you know that you're not alone if you feel the same way. And this time of year, I think, and the next couple of months are pretty hard for people because it starts getting cold, the weather changes, the clock changes, so it starts getting darker. Um, you feel a lot more poor because for some, well, I do, I don't know if you do as well, but it just feels like every bill is just draining you and it's harder to make money and everyone's preparing for like the holidays and things, so you have to save your money for that too. So it's really frustrating because for me, for example, I, I wanna go s visit my sister in Sweden, but financially, I don't think I'll be able to. Well, I'm not saying that yet, but I, I don't know. This time of year, I think it's probably hard for everyone. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about that. And again, this isn't a negative video, it's just the past month or so has been a lot of ups and downs and a lot of kind of life changes. I don't really believe anything is bad. I think everything is just a learning lesson or it's just to help us. So whenever I say these things, I don't want you guys to take me the wrong way. Obviously a lot of people are like, why are you in England during this time of the year? <laughs> I'm not here for the weather, okay? Like the weather is always bad here whenever I'm here, like you guys know. Um, obviously I'm not permanently staying here. I'm not, I don't have plans to permanently stay here. Brighton is interesting. Um, in all reality, no, it's not my favorite city to live in. The place I'm here for right now, so I have to make the most of it. And I do wanna see more of the UK, so I'm, I'm excited to see Wales and Scotland. I, um, it's gonna be very miserable and cold, and you have to account for that. Like this time of year is just the worst time to go to these places, but you know I'm going to. So you have to have the yin and yang, always. Mentally, I've been very up and down. Uh, I went through a little phase of just feeling very helpless, um, my personal finance stuff and taxes and all this stuff. Uh, really, there's just a huge problem with it all and it made me feel so helpless and depleted and hopeless. Being here in an international and when your money's run dry, it is really scary. And I'm only talking about this finance-wise because some people be like, oh, why do you say, I'll pull, like, what are you asking for money? Well, I'm not. It's just, it attributes to uh, my mental state. So I'm just, that's why I'm not asking for anything. Please don't come at me. It's just the reality is that, yeah, it's very hard to do these things while you're really poor. And I'm not complaining about that. I know that it's a nice little challenge and I can get through it and around it. And also bring interesting content to you guys, like trying to do things very budget. And I think everybody appreciates that because everybody feels poor these days. You, you can't get housing, you can't buy, hardly buy, like you can't, like everything is so expensive. Like after COVID, I feel like everyone is just in a bad spot. That's why I wanna talk about it. Um, but I'm used to being poor and it, I'm okay with it. Like I grew up very poor and I know how to make the most of things and get by with very little. I went into a little dark place for a few days, but I'm feeling better now. Uh, I do have depression issues, especially during this time of year. And then everything with this Jeep has just been very complicated. And obviously when we got it, we knew that there was gonna be some fixes that need to be done, but these, the fixes are a little bit more expensive than we anticipated. So trying to do things ourselves with the weather being really rainy, not having a garage, um, not having much money, get, got the parts ourselves, but having to wait for them to get shipped from America and then delays on the shipments to here. It's been a whole process and we still haven't gotten out on the road yet because these things take time and you guys know I'm impatient. But yeah, so that's like my mental state. I don't know if you guys can relate or not. Comment below if you can. Um, don't come at me for being negative or anything like that. It's just the title of this video obviously is extreme, but it's just the reality. And it, like I said, it's neither good nor bad. It's just what it is because this is kind of, you know, my life journey. I like to share those things with you. But in the end, these struggles are what makes you most grateful and makes you look back and remember. And I'm, 
I'm appreciative of them. I'm appreciative that I get to learn, you know, fixing vehicles and things like that. Just every little thing, even, you know, replacing the ignition wires. It's broken. I don't really understand why this is like this. Because on mine, it wasn't, it was like done here. So I don't know how this is rigged up, but to pop the hood, you have to like, this one doesn't leak any oil. It's very warm though. I see the possibility of this overheating, especially because this bar thing's in front of the radiator too. Let's do these ignition wires, yeah? quote from a garage for how much the wheel bearings would take to replace because we got the wheel bearings finally. It is like four or five hundred dollars so we're like gonna have to do it ourselves because it's too expensive in a parking garage. <laughs> I don't know I just feel like that's a big thing to try and replace yourself but it can be done you know there's lots of YouTube videos. I hope you guys are doing well out there. Uh, leave some comments for me to respond to. I love to talk to you guys. I try to respond to most all of them if I can. Leave a like and subscribe for the chaos that will ensue. Stay extraterrestrial.